Gage here from Sharp, excited to have you with me to talk about why Rockwell hardness isn't that important, but kind of is, but isn't really at the same time. So you may be shopping for your first Japanese knife and you may have come across this unit of measurement called the Rockwell hardness. Now, how is this obtained and what exactly does it mean? Rockwell hardness is obtained by uh, using a ball bearing to make an indentation in a piece of steel. Uh, a minor load is applied, the depth of indentation is measured, a major load is applied, the, the measurement is, is taken, and then that major load is released, and, the, and when the steel springs back, the, the, the difference between those two measurements helps uh, to obtain your Rockwell hardness. So now that we know how the unit of measurement is obtained, what is a good Rockwell rating? Well, at the higher end of this scale, you're going to have uh, super steels, those uh, being like R2 slash SG2, HAP40, ZDP189. These steels are gonna have a Rockwell hardness of around like 64 to 68. Uh, then you'll have uh, generally carbon steels like Algami, Algami Super, number two, Shirogami. These guys are gonna have a Rockwell hardness of around 61 to 63. Uh, and then you'll get into um, some really nice stainless steels, but uh, not considered super stainless, uh, which are gonna be like your VG10s and your Ginsans. These are generally gonna have a Rockwell hardness of around like 63 down to like 60. Uh, next, you'll have your German stainless steels. These are gonna generally range in like 56 to 54. And then going even lower than that, you're getting into like pots and pans, hammers and stuff like that, which are gonna have Rockwell hardnesses in the low 50s, maybe even the high 40s. So generally speaking, for a kitchen knife, you wanna look for something that's around like 58 up to 68. Um, but that will all depend on what your intended use is for the knife, which we'll get into a little bit later here. So why is is Rockwell hardness important uh, when buying a knife? Well, it's important because generally speaking, the higher the number or the higher the Rockwell rating the steel has achieved, the better the edge retention is going to be. And because of this, it's gonna hold its edge longer, meaning you'll be able to sharpen it flatter to the stone as well. Now this also translates into a bit of a negative here because the harder the steel also means the more brittle it's going to be and the more prone to chipping it's going to be. So if you're a home cook that uh, doesn't have the greatest knife skills or isn't super aware of the limitations of a knife, a higher Rockwell hardness might not be the most appropriate choice. Uh, if you're a home cook with, with those specific parameters, something more in the, the 60 range is probably more appropriate. If you're a professional cook and you know what a knife can and cannot do, uh, and uh, edge retention is really important to you, then going with something on the higher end of the scale definitely is a good decision. I wanna talk a little bit about my personal experience as well here. So I cooked professionally for about 10 years as, as just a lowly cook and briefly as a chef towards the end of my career uh, and have now been in the knife game for almost six years. So about 15 years of experience with knives. And when I was first shopping for knives, the Rockwell hardness was one of the things I, uh, I took uh, into consideration most. I, I thought that the higher the Rockwell hardness, the better the, the knife was going to be. And generally speaking, the higher the Rockwell hardness, the more expensive these knives are. So you can uh, kind of assume that the that the nicer steels, you're going to get a really nice knife, but it might not translate into a great knife just because it has a high Rockwell hardness. It's important to take into account the, the three pillars of what make a great knife. And in our mind, those are the, the steel that's used, the way it's heat treated, and the edge geometry of the knife. I think edge geometry gets looked over the most and has the biggest impact on the performance of the knife. So whether your steel is 60 Rockwell or 70 Rockwell, doesn't really matter if the edge geometry isn't there. You could have a really hard steel, but it's sharpened like an ax. It's not gonna cut very well. So Jake brought up a great point here. We did some testing with a bunch of knives the other day, and one of the knives we tested was a Masutani VG1 gold knife. It has a Rockwell hardness probably of around 50 58, 59, which in the Japanese world is, is quite low. But the edge geometry and the sharpening out of the box on these knives is spectacular, uh, and it translates to really, really awesome performance. 
Now, maybe it's not gonna stay sharp for quite as long as a knife made from ZDP 189, but it's going to have its advantages in that it's not quite as brittle or prone to chipping, and it will be uh, much easier to sharpen when the time comes as well. Now we've kind of touched on this a, a bit already, but uh, we next want to talk about why a higher rock wall hardness isn't going to solve your problems uh, that you have with your current knife. So maybe you have a knife right now that you're just not happy with. It's it's not staying sharp as long as you would like it to. And you're, in your mind, you think getting a higher rock wall hardness knife is going to solve all your problems. And it may, but you also should take into account some other aspects of what may be dulling your knife quick more quickly than you'd like. Um, uh, those being scraping your knife across the cutting board, number one uh, cause of a dull knife. Uh, probably second cause of a dull knife is the work surface that you're using. Um, so making sure you have good knife skills and good knife care habits before you start sh shopping for your next knife is really important as well. You may you may have a knife that performed really, really well when you first bought it and it's just not holding its edge anymore. And this may come down to uh, edge geometry again. It may be that you've sharpened this knife so many times that it's getting really thick behind the edge and that edge geometry isn't there anymore. And that's a good indication that it's time to thin your knife out. If you can't do that, we can do it. Or there may be a Japanese knife store close to you that can do it as well. Uh, and this is a great way to get an extra life out of your knife as well. So there you have it guys. I hope this was enlightening for you. Uh, it certainly was when I was learning about knives. If you have any questions, we're always happy to help. So send us an email or use the live chat feature on our website. If you enjoyed this video, got some value out of it, slice that like button up. Subscribe to our channel for more knife related content. Till the next one, stay sharp.